Hi everybody, this is Julie with Be The Holic, and in this video I'm going to share with you pricing tips for selling your handmade jewelry. And this is part of our Selling Your Handmade Jewelry video series, which we are creating just to help you with selling your handmade wares. We get lots of questions at Be The Holic about it, and so we thought we'd put together this little video series. So if you're not familiar with Be The Holic, we sell tons of jewelry making supplies and have hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube and beadaholic.com teaching you how to make jewelry. So bead weaving stitches, things like that, wire wrapping, how to use tools. And so this is a little bit of a departure for us. So this is going to be entirely devoted to helping you sell now your wares and they're going to be my personal tips. So since this is the first in this video series, I do want to share a little bit about myself. So I have been making some type of handcrafted item to sell since I was 14, 15 years old, I started with dollhouse miniatures. My mom was a doll artist and so I just started selling with her on her table and making little things to sell and that actually turned into a full business that became a wholesale business and I did for many, many years well into my 20s and was very fortunate and could travel all over the world with that. So I have done dollhouse miniatures, I've done handmade jewelry, I've worked for companies that sell handmade items. So I've done everything from flea markets like the Rose Bowl Flea Market in Pasadena, California, to the New York Gift Show at the Javits Center. I've done juried art shows. I've done shows in Tokyo, London, everywhere, hundreds of shows. And um, so I've done a lot of selling, wholesale and retail. So this first video is about pricing your handmade jewelry. The first thing you're going to want to do is figure out the cost of your supplies. So you've made a collection. So you've made some set of designs that you are going to put out into the world and sell. So what you need to do next is figure out, well, what are you going to sell it for? Because this is a business. You're going to want to obviously make money and cover your expenses and be able to thrive and keep doing this. So you need to figure out what your base expenses are in terms of your cost of supplies. So let's use an example. If you were going to go ahead and bead weave a bracelet and say you're using all these different colors of seed beads. There's so many pretty colors out there. Let's say you're using 10 different colors of seed beads. Each tube costs $4. All right. So you got $40 worth of seed beads. And then you have a clasp and you have some type of stringing material that you're using as well. So you're not going to just say, well, my cost of materials is $40 for the seed beads, let's say $5 for the clasp and maybe $10 for the stringing materials. You're going to divide out what percentage you used in that one bracelet. So maybe use one tenth of a tube of each of the 10 tubes of seed beads. So your cost for the seed beads is actually $4, not 40, because it's one tenth. So 40 divided by 10, $4. And so you're gonna do that with each and every item that you have in your finished piece. And so you might need to actually figure out the price per bead. I've done that before. I've gone, okay, well, I get 50 beautiful check glass beads in this bag or on this strand. What is the cost per bead? And then maybe I used eight of them in the design. So you're gonna really wanna do some math, figure out exactly what you're spending. Okay, so that's step one. So let's say at the end of the day, it costs $6 to make that bracelet. Then you need to figure out your timing. So you're going to need to time yourself how long it took. Now, not everyone figures out their labor costs the same way, and not everyone actually comes up with a labor cost number. But I know a lot of people who do, and you, what they do is they calculate their hours spent making the design or minutes. Some designs are very quick and they say, I wanna make X dollars per hour. And so that can be, maybe you wanna make $15 an hour, $20, 25. What is it that you want to make per hour for your labor cost? And you're going to come up with that number. So let's go back to our bracelet. So you've got a $6 supply cost. And now you're going to say, I wanna make $20 an hour and it takes me two hours to make this design. Okay, so $40 labor. So 40 plus six, you're at $46 for your price. Now I want you to then pad your price a little bit. So this is where I think a lot of people end up spending a lot more money than they realize. And they don't take into account your show fees. So let's say you're doing a gift show. You got to pay for the table. They don't kind of take into account the packing supplies. Uh, let's say you're selling online and you're shipping and you need to buy boxes and bags or you're selling online, you have listing fees. So those numbers are really hard to come up with 
a percentage. It, it's hard, easy to be like, well, it costs $5 to ship this or something like that. But usually a lot of those numbers are kind of just, you know, you spend the money and then you forget to add them in. And so I like to pad it. So I've got $46 for my bracelet. I'm gonna add an extra five. I'm gonna go up to 51 or I'm gonna go up to 52. And so I've got that price to cover my expenses, my labor, and all my costs. Now, what I like to also do is to look and see the, kind of what the market price is for that and what my competition is selling their wares for. So you're not looking at your competition to copy them, but you're looking at a bunch of different people who do similar items and seeing what they're pricing it for. So you have a lovely bead woven bracelet, you're at about $52 is that the price that you're seeing them out there for? Or are people selling them a lot less or a lot more? Are all the lovely bead woven bracelets more like $120? You don't wanna to be too low and you don't wanna to be too high. You kinda of wanna find that sweet spot. And of course, everybody's gonna have a little bit different cost of supplies, a little different cost of labor, all of that. But you do kinda of wanna be aware of the general cost out there in the world of what things are selling for. You wouldn't necessarily want to go to, let's say, an art fair and you've got your $55 bracelet and everyone else is selling them for $200. You kind of want to bump up your price a little bit or it could be the reverse. Maybe you were saying you needed to make $60 an hour and yours is going to be priced in the hundreds and everyone else is more in the $50, $60 range. So it's really kind of looking around and seeing what is out there in addition to just figuring out your labor and your cost of supplies. And then there is one more factor, and I know that this is a lot to take in, so just please take it step by step. Do your cost of supplies, your cost of labor, you know, pad that number a little bit to cover your extra expenses, and then look at what the market is. So you kind of have that nice number in mind, just one step at a time. But like I said, there's one more thing that's really important to take into consideration. And that is whether you are going to sell retail or wholesale. If you're not too familiar with those terms, retail basically means you as the maker are selling it to the end consumer. You're going to an art fair, you're listing it online, and you're selling it to the person who's going to wear it or who's gonna give it as a gift. Okay, so that's retail. Wholesale is you're selling it to a shop, or another business that's then going to in turn sell it to the person who's gonna love it and wear it and enjoy it or gift it. So there's someone in the middle. So if you're gonna sell wholesale, most shops are gonna want a 50% discount off of your price. And that's because they need to make a profit too. It needs to be worth it for them to buy it, spend that money to give it to you ahead of time, and then be able to resell it and keep their business going. Like I said, oftentimes it's 50%. You will find some stores will do 30 or 40, um, but I've just found most of the time it's gonna be that 50%. That's kind of what is expected. So you've got your price now for your piece of jewelry. It's $52. Are you okay if you wanna do wholesale selling that for half? Are you okay instead of getting $52, getting $26? And if you're not okay, you're gonna to wanna to bump up that retail price. So maybe you wanna make it 60, maybe you even wanna make it 70. You've looked around, that's still within the range of what pieces are selling for that are kind of similar. And then if it's 70, you take half off of that for wholesale and you're at 35. And are you okay with 35? Does that sound good? I know maybe you're doing a mix of retail and wholesale. So not all of your items will be wholesale. But it is something to consider because you probably are gonna to go to a craft fair and someone might approach you. They might say, I have this little boutique in town. I'd love to sell your product. And you want to have it priced accordingly to be able to give that discount and still be happy with what you are making. So in review, a couple things to keep in mind, cost of materials, factor it out, figure out every single bead, then go ahead, your labor costs, what do you wanna make per hour? Pad it a little because you will have other expenses. Then you wanna look at what the world around you is selling them for. And then finally, are you gonna do wholesale, retail, or a combination of both? And that's gonna to help to determine your prices as well. So those are my personal tips. If you are watching this and you've sold handmade jewelry before and you wanna share some of your tips with the community, please comment, we would love to hear them. I think that is such a great community, the handcrafted world, and we're all there to help each other. 
So please share your tips. It would be really great to start a discussion about that. And I'm gonna share more tips. So the next video I'm gonna do is about uh, choosing the right show to do and how to prepare for a show. And I'm also gonna do another video on selling online. So there's gonna be several different videos in this series and we're gonna just keep adding to it. So there's always gonna be a little bit more to share and to know about. So I really appreciate you watching and I can't wait to read everyone else's tips as well. Thank you.